what he had to say and how interestingly he could say it. So now let me turn the program over to Michael Costa. Everything you've ever known, please open and open. He's blessed. 
Look after number one, that's what I say. No one else will. Will we? And anyway, why not me? Why not? Why, 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 why? Oh, which way? I mean, what, 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 what I want, I don't want, I like, I don't like. What should I want? What should I do? I mean, what's important? What's really important? I mean, what if the hokey pokey is really what it's all about? Oh, I'm so lost. So lost, I don't know the way. Which way? Which way? They say that the way lies through me. I said, hey, King, you must be crazy. 
and we come to the point where I suddenly get the idea of wanting to perform this live. And so I got in touch with Pete, and he sent me a, a CD of the backing track. So in recent times, I've been able to do uh, this piece, uh, <laughs> this piece uh, with the backing. But fast forward even further, and dear old Bob Fredericks, who's chained to the desk behind here, projecting, <laughs> projecting things, uh, worked out some visuals, in fact, two different kinds of visuals to go along with this piece. Um, and with a bit of luck, <laughs> we'll get that, get that projected on, on the back here. It's called Affirmation or The Love Flows On or Yes. Okay, Bob? Thank you. 
Thanks, Bob. Thank you. 
through again and yet again into the murky waters of your self-designed bindings. And I emerge and resurrect the compulsive patterns of my ages past. I apply deftly my surgeon's knife, cutting away the dross and debris of your dead and deadening desires. And I complain and scream at you, failing to feel the healing power of your hand at work. I smile at your absurdities, chuckle at your crazy inconsistencies. And well, I storm in anger, bite back, feel intolerance, let gross grief consume me, allow want and fear to, to prompt all my doing. I wait and wait, understanding and forgiving with infinite patience for the moment of your awakening. Ah, yes, but I sleep on and on, but impatient for the moment of my waking, impatient for the treasure of our meeting. I open wide my arms and beckon. I hang back, hang my head, shuffle my feet, and wonder why, when longing as I do for your warm embrace, I think there still in the compromise of a dream. I am silent, and in the silence, uh, I put my fingers in my ears, turn my head, uh, and fill my mind with the clatter of clamoring voices, and then I cry, I cannot hear! What's that you're saying? I am closer to you than your own breath. Well, I suppose that's fairly close, but I mean, I don't know if that's true. my divine authority that you and I are not we, but one. Yeah, but I can hardly feel the we. I love you more. Well, the truth is, I'm not loving myself so well in these days. <laughs> you must strive to see me as I really am. But I'm striving, I'm striving. Can't you see how I'm struggling? Forget about yourself. Just be for me in your being for others. And remember me always. But I forget you. I, I forget to remember you. Forget to forget myself. What can I do? I smile and bind your arms and legs, and with a casual, don't worry, be happy, I cast you into turbulent waters, instructing you not to get wet. And I emerge from the torrent and stand here before you, a soggy and dripping, wretched mess. I squeeze you dry, then commence the task of grinding you down to dust so that I may then trample you under my feet. Oh, I look for escape, but I know there's no escaping that which cannot fail to come to pass. I ask for your obedience. I resist. I ask for your surrenderance. I resist. I resist. I ask for your love. <laughs> Crazy as it may seem, I'm even resisting loving you. I ask for your love, and I love you. And I'm crazier still. I'm resisting, receiving your love. What kind of man am I? I ask for your love, and I love you, and love you. I, I, I mean, I'm resisting in spite of my longing to long to. I love you, and love you, and go on loving you. I mean, I can fake loving you. I can, uh, I can sing songs of love even. I mean, if I wasn't resisting, well, I, I would be receiving your love, feeling it, and returning it. But the truth is, I'm just resisting. I love you, and love you, and go on loving you. So the problem is, how can I get rid of this resistance? How can I resist resisting? If only that were possible. But I've got to find some way of doing that. And go on loving yes. you. Now, maybe, maybe, hey, what if I put throw I my love resistance on the you? Love you. I'd go on loving you. and love you and love you and love you and 
the seventh day of the seventh month. So I put all my money on horse number seven in the seventh race. It came in seventh. <laughs> Now, I was going to do M, M for Maya and Mind and Manomesh, but instead I'm going to do M for Moustache. Now, I notice around the main about there's an awful lot of moustaches. <laughs> and uh, this is a true story from my first ever visit to, to this blessed place. And I was being shown around up at Mayo. By Mansari. And she was telling me about this and that and pointing this thing and that and talking about this room and, and that room where Baba did certain work. And then I heard her talking about his moustache room. And my mind took the flight. I thought, ah, that explains why Baba's moustache looks different. Different photos. He'd go into his moustache and he would think, which one will I have? I'll try this one today, or maybe that one for the super occasion. Yeah, and, and, and as my mind was coming down from this reverie, uh, Mansari was still talking about Baba's must ashram. <laughs> Bom 
fix it if we don't get it started right. Because when I was at my most lost, 
because he kept silent for all those years, so that we may learn to listen with love and one day hear the word of words which in the beginning was. I love Mehrdaba because when he used to play cards with his dear ones, he would blatantly cheat and have the fortune of losers rub their noses in the dust at his feet. I love Mayor Baba. Ah, because there is nothing he will not do to release me from the touch of the fire, no matter what pain and confusion that may cause me. I love Mayor Baba. Because when it seems I cannot go a step further, in the heat of the desert sun, there he is beside me with a cup of cool spring water. I love Mehababa, however, because he refuses to administer soothing balms when he knows that my progress will be all the more profound when I can find him in my deepest despair as well as in my sweetest joy. I love Mehababa because the jest on his chest makes him chuckle infectiously. I love Mehababa because when he smiles at me, his warm glow penetrates the hard shell of my defensive walls and caresses the child within. I love Mehababa because he reassures me that there is nothing to fear. I need feel no shame or guilt, nor hide from him the ugliness of my shadow self, because in his infinite mercy, he forgives. I love Mehababa because his silence resonates in the depth of my being, as the voice of all voices, as the song of all songs, as the longing to end all longings. I love Mehababa because he is so divinely human and so humanly divine. I love Mehababa because he is love itself. I love my father because what else can I possibly do?